making alkenes. Alkenes are important. Some say their principal use is in the manufacture of additional polymers. So it's important to have a method for manufacturing these substances. Now there are two basic ways in which this can be done. So when it comes to making alkenes, two methods. The first method is cracking. And this touches on some standard grade chemistry. Now back in standard grade days, you were told that crude oil produces many fractions, many substances in the crude oil. And one of the biggest fractions of all, the one which makes a large percentage of the crude oil, is a substance such as tar. And tar has very long molecules. There's an overabundance of tar. It's the tar that makes the oil thick and black. But there's not a great demand for tar. What we really want are much smaller molecules. So you may recall, in the standard grade course, we told that these tar-like molecules can be snapped can be broken into pieces. And these much smaller molecules is what we need. These smaller molecules tend to be more petrol-sized molecules and therefore far more useful. But in amongst the debris, in amongst all the broken bits, you'll find double bonds. You'll find little molecules with double bonds. In other words, as a byproduct, in this process, the alkenes the double bonded molecules are not the main product. The main product is the petrol. The alkenes are a sort of spin-off, a sideline. We could crack something else. We could crack something smaller than tar. Now there's a fraction out there that seems to crop up a great deal, and it's naphtha. The naphtha fraction has much smaller molecules than tar. The naphtha fraction isn't burnt. Most of the smaller fractions are burnt, they're useful as fuels. But the naphtha is kept aside and uses what's called a feedstock. It's used to, to produce other materials. You can crack naphtha, and if you crack naphtha, now you're going to get alkenes. So cracking naphtha is an alternative way of making alkenes. Right? So, there we have it. You can crack tar, big molecules. We can crack, crack naphtha, medium-sized molecules. Or we can crack small molecules. Now, just how small are these molecules? The answer is very small. It's quite surprising to think that molecules which are already very small can be further broken down. We're talking about certain gases. We're talking about gases such as, say, propane and ethane, and it does come as a surprise that these can be cracked. Propane, that's C3H8, has molecules which can be snapped or cracked. Why would anyone want to do that? The answer is to make alkenes. Alkenes, as you see, are very important. So if you start with propane, you give it the right conditions, it can crack. Here's one possibility. It might, it might split. It might split in two. We make it a two carbon piece and a one carbon piece. And if it cracks, we might well get something like that. Let's say we might get ethene. What would be left? Let's see. This has three carbons and eight hydrogens. This has to have three carbons and eight hydrogens. There are three carbons. There are four hydrogens missing. So this is likely to be methane. So there we have it. That's a possibility. Here's another possibility. We might simply snap off a couple of hydrogen atoms. If we snap off a couple of hydrogen atoms, that's still classified as cracking. So cracking is a process which tends to produce alkenes. Some people would call this removing of hydrogen dehydrogenation. One other example is ethane. When ethane is cracked, there's only one alkene that could be made, and that is ethane would become ethene. And again, it would happen because it's lost a couple of hydrogen atoms. So then it is cracking. Cracking can be big molecules of tar, standard grade. It can be medium-sized molecules like naphtha, or surprisingly small molecules such as these gases.
Now we did say there were two, made, two ways of making alkenes. There's a cracking method and there's a totally different method which is dehydration of an alcohol. And how does that work? Well, let's look at an alcohol. Here's an alcohol, a really simple alcohol. Let's take one of the simplest alcohols of all. Certainly the most common alcohol is ethanol. If we take ethanol, how can we make it into an alkene? Well, let's look at the corresponding alkene. There it's there. How have we gone from alcohol to alkene? What's happened in turning this molecule into this molecule? We've lost that. It's gone. And what does that add up to? Water. That's why it's dehydration. How would you do that? You'd expect you to know that the chemical aluminium oxide does that. Aluminium oxide is able to remove water. It's not the only chemical you'll come across that does this, but it's relatively safe. If you were to take an ethanol and pass it over aluminium oxide, you get an alkene. How would you know? How would you know that you'd be successful? Well, of course, an alkene with its double bond would decolorize bromine. This wouldn't decolorize bromine, but this would. So if this product affected the color of the bromine, if it took the color away, you'd know this has been a success. There's one little problem with this example. It's slightly too simple. It can be, there's a little complication. It could crop up. Let's take a, a more complicated alcohol, such as, say, this one here. Now, what is this? Four carbon atoms, but, butanol, butan 2 all. Let's have a look at this. It's butan 2 all because you have to indicate just whereabouts this group is. It's on the second carbon atom. Butan 2 all. Now, if this was to be dehydrated, what would we get? Well, there's two possibilities. If we're going to remove water, the water you're going to remove from that position, putting a double bond there, or from this position, putting a double bond there. That means there's two outcomes. You end up with a double bond in the middle of the molecule, or a double bond at the end of the molecule. Watch out for this. It's a, an example of where you have to have your wits about you. Realise there's often more than one outcome. So taking water from this position, we end up with a double bond there. What alkene have we made? Butte. Two e. Butte because of the four carbons. Two e meaning the double bond is on the second carbon atom. Whereas here, having taken the water from that position, we've got ourselves butte one e So there it is. Al alkenes can be made in two ways, cracking or by dehydrating an alcohol.